Hi, it is meteorologist Christy Shields and the seniors and juniors at Belfont Area High School are learning about weather and they had some questions on air pressure. So I thought it'd be a great idea to explain air pressure and how it impacts weather and us here on Earth. So let's get into the science behind it. Air pressure, it pushes on us at all times. There's air all around us. I think it's kind of something we forget because you know we don't feel it our bodies are built to deal with this air pressure and in fact that air pushes at us at a force of 14.7 pounds per square inch down onto our bodies and everywhere here on earth every day we do measure air pressure with a barometer and in meteorology we typically measure air pressure with millibars so above 1013 millibars equals high pressure and below 1013 millibars usually typically equals a low pressure so we're going to get into it even further as we head into this it's easier to maybe think of it as kind of like the ocean that's what we like to do in meteorology we like to think of the atmosphere kind of as the ocean we live in so if you think about it if you dive down into the ocean you typically feel that pressure of the water around you like I said, we're built for the air pressure, but we are living at the bottom of an ocean, and that's kind of how it works. So air pressure depends on the temperature of the air and the density of the air molecules. And in meteorology, we use that ideal gas law, which is PV equals NRT. So we're using this equation to kind of calculate air pressure. Again, we can use a barometer, but when you take this equation and you plug in the pressure volume, the constant, as well as the temperature, if pressure increases, so does the temperature. So I've got a little bit of an explainer here for you guys to give you a little bit of an idea. So I've got this bottle and this balloon. Right now, the balloon is not blown up, but if I fill up the balloon, we have, we have high pressure in this balloon. You can see it's filled and the bottle, nothing is tied off. So how is this staying filled up? Well, that's because again, air takes up space and we've kind of plugged this off to make it its own system here. So we have air outside of the balloon as well as in the balloon. So even though we didn't tie off the balloon, it's staying inflated. What do you think happens if I take this out? So we've got high pressure in here because we've got those molecules closer together. It's a little more dense compared to the outside. Well, once we take that out, the balloon deflates because that high pressure in the balloon is exiting out into the air where we have more of those air molecules moving around. So that kind of gives you an idea of how it works a little bit. So high pressure in the balloon, lower pressure outside. Once we let go of that system and we let the air out, then you can see that the balloon deflates and it gives a little bit of an idea of how air really does take up space. So let's talk about high pressure. So when pressure is high, the winds are going to be blowing away from that high pressure system. So winds blow clockwise around a high in the northern hemisphere. So what's happening is air is sinking down from the sky to fill in the space because again, we've got this area of high pressure. So with that air sinking down from the atmosphere and moving out of the high, that's why we're seeing more in the way of clear weather compared to not so great weather. So usually high pressure means clear weather compared to if we have low pressure. And again, like we were saying before, you get high pressure if you see 10, 13 millibars or above. So let's explain low pressure. So when low pressure, when the pressure is low, it means the winds are blowing towards the low pressure system and they're also going to be moving counterclockwise around the low in us here in the United States where we're in the northern hemisphere. So air is rising into the sky and it is going to condense because if you think about it, there's a lot of bodies of water, the ocean. So as we have these low areas of pressure, we have that air rising into the sky. It's condensing that water vapor and it's creating clouds, which creates the stormy type of weather, whether it be snow in the winter or some storms and rain in the summer and the spring and fall. So again, low pressure happens when we're below 1013 millibars. So I'm going to give you a little more of an explainer here. Again, we've got that clockwise.
I and out diverging, allowing for clearer conditions. Now, if we take a look at the low, those winds are spinning counterclockwise around the low. We've got that air moving up into the sky and we, we have our high and low right now on the ocean. So with that movement up into the air, it is going to condense, creating clouds, creating not so great weather. So that's kind of how high pressure and low pressure really impact us on a daily basis here on Earth and helps us create our weather. And again, remember, we're getting those pressures because the sun does not heat the Earth evenly. It heats it at different rates because we've got higher mountains and we've got, you know, down to sea level. So the air is being heated at different temperatures. And with that temperature and density, you get those different pressures, which creates our weather and creates our wind. And how do we find this? Well, again, we were saying that we measure air pressure with a barometer. There's a ton of sites across the entire United States that end up collecting the air pressure in certain locations. We then can kind of take that information and you can find where these areas of high and low pressures are located. So here, again, this high pressure in South Carolina and also into that area in South Carolina is 1021 millibars. Remember we were saying anything above 1013 millibars is considered high pressure, so they've indicated that here. And then we can also take a look at a low pressure system. And if we take a look at this low right here, you can see that it is 994 millibars. So that would indicate low pressure system. And then we can indicate that here on our weather map and figure out where we're going to see stormy conditions or drier weather. If you have any more questions on how air pressure works and how it relates to meteorology, you can always send me an email, cshields at wtajtv.com.